Hi, I'm Joy Springer, and today we're going to be talking about the parametric scoring process. We're going to talk about um, what the parametric scoring is and how the parametric model works, and understanding the nine-point rating scale that we use for the parametric scoring process, and the steps that are required to complete the parametric scoring process. So what is the parametric method? Well, it's a rapid visual assessment um, that results in a model deferred maintenance number. It's not necessarily accurate at the location level, but it becomes more accurate at the portfolio level. And because of that, we are not going to use these model numbers to drive funding or estimate projects. These numbers are purely for our reporting or deferred maintenance costs. And some things that the uh, parametric method does is going to provide a snapshot of our portfolio's health it's going to show us a trend of condition over time and help us determine where we need to develop projects. So once we've completed our parametric scoring process, we'll be able to see those areas that stand out as, um, as issues where we might want to develop projects. Um, some things that it's not going to do, as I mentioned, it's not going to produce um, a precise deferred maintenance number for individual assets. <clears throat> we aren't going to be generating work orders in order to come up with our deferred maintenance number. Um, we'll write those work orders when we're ready to do the work or write a project. And it's not going to provide us with the detailed information that we need in order to create a project. Uh, when we need to get that information in order to scope our projects, we'll go back out and get, gather that information in those specific areas instead of gathering that information for everything. So when par parks are Completing the parametric scoring process in the parks, it's important to have the correct people involved in the correct roles. And we've identified um, some park roles here. But um, all roles and responsibilities are not within the park. Wasso and the regions also have a part in this process. So at the park, the facility manager is going to be the person who is communicating the roles and responsibilities with their staff, setting the priorities for when the assessments need to be done, and providing that final review and approval before the parametric scoring, scoring assessments are submitted. The field maintenance personnel are going to be our subject matter experts. They're the ones who know the buildings inside and out, and therefore they're the ones that are going to do the actual scoring um, that'll help model our deferred maintenance numbers. <clears throat> our FMSS staff are going to be our support uh, for all this, coordinating the documents, making sure that the the field staff has what they need, making sure that they understand what's included in the location record so that we're scoring the correct thing. And then our superintendents are going to need to understand the parametric method and what uh, their park needs to successfully complete it, and working with the facility manager to provide that final review and approval before um, the scoring results are submitted. <clears throat> As I mentioned, WASO and Region also have a part in this. Uh, WASO is going to be the one that's um, taking in all of the numbers and uh, coordinating the repository for service-wide reporting. WASO will also be the ones that are providing the scoring tools to the field for this process and, and all the other tools that are needed to complete the scoring process. <clears throat> the regions are the ones that are going to be coordinating this process with the park. So um, as you work through this, you want to work with your regional FMSS POC and decide um, how your region is, is going about this process. Every region is responsible for their own coordinating efforts. So what's in it for the park? Uh, the biggest thing that comes out of this is an ease condition assessment requirement. As I mentioned, instead of going out and writing a work order and costing it for everything in order to come up with a deferred maintenance number, we're doing this quick rapid visual assessment that models our deferred maintenance number, and then we are only writing those work orders and costing them when we need them to do the work or for a project. <clears throat> so how does the parametric scoring model work? The rapid visual assessment of some key systems. So for every asset um, code, we have a set of systems that we're going to be rating. And when we rate them um, based on the rating, a model deferred maintenance cost is calculated, and that's based on the percentage of our current replacement value for that location. Work. 
So some references that we will um, talk about throughout this presentation and that you want to pay particular attention to as you go through the scoring process are the user guides, the inspection guide, and the frequently asked questions document. All of these resources can be found at the link in the notes pod to the left of the screen. So on the screen, um, we're looking at the parametric model for a building, but there's a similar model for all of the asset codes. And we're going to go through uh, the different pieces of this. So parametric model for every asset code is going to have something called a facility grouping. Um, not everything fits into the same box, and so we're using the facility grouping to put our, um, at our different assets into an appropriate um, category. So for buildings, we have complex, standard, and simple. And depending on, on which category it's in, um, our percentages of the CRV that are associated with the system um, will change. So for instance, the facility grouping on a standard building, the roof is going to account for 8% of the CRV. But on a simple um, building, it's going to account for 26% of the CRV. I just want to note, too, that the percentages that are shown here are not necessarily uh, what's used in the calculations on the back end. It's purely to uh, show you how all of this works. Across the top, you'll see the different systems that we're going to rate for a building. So for a building, we will rate structure, exterior, roof, HVAC, electrical, plumbing, and vans, interior finishes, windows and doors, and ground. There'll be a different set of systems for each of the asset types. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, we have the inspection guide and the user guide. And you'll be able to uh, turn to those documents for an in-depth definition of the facility grouping and um, the system. <clears throat> so most everything is going to be moving to a parametric model. We have everything listed here that will be using a parametric model to uh, model with deferred maintenance numbers. There are, of course, a couple exceptions that we'll get to on the next slide. And a few things I want to highlight with some of the asset types that are here. So for housing, housing will be scored um, the same as a building. However, it will be broken out onto a separate tab, and um, there will be a separate score for the interior to align with the reporting numbers that are needed for IQMS. We'll talk about that a little bit more in depth later on. Uh, we've also added in some historic cost adjustment factors throughout this process. Uh, one area where you'll notice this is with building. So um, when there is a historic building, there will, there will be additional facility groupings to choose from, which will allow you to uh, make sure that you're um, incorporating the treatment type for that historic structure to help um, make sure that the costs are accurate for that specific treatment. Again, all this is detailed further in the inspection and user guides. So some things that will not be using the parametric model. While we do have a parametric model for roads, parking areas, and things like that, uh, we won't be using it for everything. Uh, if a road or similar asset is assessed by federal highways, we will use the deferred maintenance number from federal highways. However, if something is not assessed by federal highways, we will use the parametric model. Dams and levees and concessions both have um, a very in-depth assessment process, and for both of those, they will be accepting um, the deferred maintenance numbers from those assessment processes. For interpretive media, at this time, we have not developed a model for this. We're determining uh, what interpretive media will look like in FMSS going forward, and until we determine that, we haven't developed a model for interpretive media. So the rating scale for the parametric scoring process is 0 to 9. Zero being that the system doesn't exist. So if you're going through the systems and your particular asset doesn't have that system, you'll give it a zero. And the um, portion of the CRV that was associated with that system will get redistributed to the other systems that you do have. Uh, on the um, extreme ends of the scale, we have one, which is very poor, non-functional. And then we have nine, which is very good, or only normal maintenance is required.
here we have a visual of the rating scale. Um, there's a more um, in-depth version of this rating scale in the inspection and user guides that provides a definition for each of the scores. Um, but to just give you an idea of how this works, um, instead of having to choose from nine scores, we started with the GAR model. So when you first go out and look at something, you want to determine is it good, is it fair, or is it in poor condition. And then once you've determined that, you whittled it down to three scores, and uh, you can choose the appropriate score from those three. Uh, again, the, the definitions are in the inspection and user guide for each of these ratings. But to give you an idea, nine is minimally normal, minimal normal routine maintenance is required, system functions as intended, down to one, which is major replacement and or repairs are required to restore function, unsafe to operate. <clears throat> so once again, I want to point out that the uh, percentages on this um, Green are just here to show you how the calculations work. They may not be the accurate percentages that are occurring in the calculations on the back side. But this is a uh, calculation for one specific system. Uh, we're looking at an admin building whose current replacement value is $10 million. Looking just at the interior finishes for this building, they account for 19% of the current replacement Multiplying that times the uh, CRV for the full building, we determine that the CRV for just the interior finishes is 1.9 million. Take a look at the interior finishes and determine that the score for them is a seven. And based on the percentage aligns with that score, multiplying that times the um, system current replacement value, we determine that the deferred maintenance for interior finishes is $45,000. That is just the deferred maintenance for one system. Similar calculation will occur for each of the systems you're building, and all of those uh, system deferred maintenance will get added together, and you'll get the full parametric deferred maintenance number. The first step of the process is the SMSS data cleanup. Parts will be provided a work order cleanup tool spreadsheet, which will flag some problem work orders Parks can review. We'll get into that a little bit more in the next few slides. Parks will also want to do a desk audit, reviewing their SMSS location data for accuracy and completeness, ensuring that their operating statuses are correct, and looking at the quantities associated with an SMSS location. Just to note, the um, operating status is very important to this process because if it is not in an operating status, it will not occur in your, it will not show up in your parametric scoring tool. <clears throat> and then the other thing we want to take a look at is our current replacement values. <clears throat> want to make sure we review them for accuracy and completeness. Um, all of this is based on a percentage of the CRV, so it's important that our CRVs are accurate. Some problem areas that we know um, are of particular concern would be trails, maintain landscapes, and heritage assets. So pay particular attention to the CRVs for those. This is a view of a dashboard of the um, work orders that were, will be flagged in the cleanup tool. I just wanted to highlight some of the reasons why a work order might be flagged. You'll see those in the bottom left-hand corner. So um, the cleanup tool will flag things such as work orders that haven't been touched since FY13, um, work orders that have a target start date of after FY23, um, condition assessment application created work orders that haven't been touched since FY16. So based on um, the criteria listed here, work orders were flagged and a park will receive a spreadsheet with <clears throat> the work orders that have been flagged. On the left hand side you'll see some basic uh, work order information. On the right hand side uh, there's an indication of why the work order was flagged, so you'll understand why it's on this list. And then the orange column is where a park can indicate if they would like to change the status of the work order. And then this will be uploaded for parks on the back side of the SMSS. Mm -hmm. So the next step of the parametric process is doing the actual scoring. Parks have gone about this differently and throughout the um, piloting process, and every park is going to be a little bit different. But we have found that a lot of parks are able to do some of the scoring 
without actually going into the field. If you have the correct people in the room and the staff that knows the buildings inside and out, they can score this without stepping foot into the facility. Again, a caveat here is that for housing, you will need to go to the actual housing unit to do uh, your scoring process so that these can be used for, for um, the IQ list reporting that's needed for rental income. So here we're um, looking at the parametric scoring tool. There's multiple tabs in the tool. What you see here is the um, first tab, which is a dashboard to show your progress as you go through the parametric scoring process at your park. The remainder of the tabs look similar to this. There'll be a tab for each of the asset types. We're looking at trails here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, housing will be broken out from buildings, and so it'll have its own tab as well. Some things I want to point out here is that first column is our facility grouping. <clears throat> then we have some basic location information. And um, the far right, you'll see some light gray columns. Those will be where your systems are. And this is where parks will input um, the 0 to 9 score. And once you have completed the entire scoring, you must uh, put a score in every single uh, column, then your parametric VM will calculate. Um, you'll also see that the uh, deferred maintenance difference will calculate based on um, the FMSS VM and the parametric VM. Here we have a screenshot of um, what the inspection guide looks like. It'll be a similar page for all of the asset types. Again, we're looking at buildings here. But there'll be a definition for all the facility groupings, all of the systems for each, each of the asset uh, types. Going into housing a little bit more in depth, um, because there are individual units that need um, specific information in order to um, satisfy IQ misreporting, things will look a little bit different for you on the housing tab. So there will be a line for the location record. And then there'll be an additional line for all of the um, units that are in a specific location. So you'll have the overall location and then each individual housing unit. So um, for instance, this last location here, we have a seasonal quarters that has seven housing units in it. So you'll have an additional line for each of those housing units. <clears throat> we'll be able to score the interior separately so that we can get that interior and exterior score that's needed for IQ units reporting. So while we are piloting this, um, we were out at a park and um, we had some uh, folks film while they were going through the scoring process in the building. So you'll see them describe what's going on with um, the particular system that they're rating, talk about how they scored it and why they scored it that way. And we'll talk about that a little bit after you've had a chance to watch the video. I'm Jessica Bundy and I'm here with the team at the Gateway National Recreation Area to do parametric condition assessments. We're going to see it started here on History House. Conveyance. This includes all conveyance systems, including elevators, lifts, and escalators, which we have not. We don't have any in this building. Yes. So no we're going to mark that down as a zero. We got a zero. We can redistribute that uh, that number, that part of the CRV, to everything else. Thank you. All right. So next up on the condition assessment guide is the electrical system, and we have Manny here, the subject matter expert, because he is the park electrician at Sandy Hook, and he's going to talk to us about the condition of the electrical. So this building uh, is referred back to the 1940s, so a lot of the upgrades needed to be done to the electrical system to our right. We have actually the upgraded electrical panel in order to meet all NEC codes in order to upgrade the, the building. So based off of our Permetrics uh, uh, rating scheme right here, there are some uh, little issues that need to be addressed, uh, some minor repairs, but the system is fully functional. Uh, here and is a deemed safe over here. So based off of the Prometric scheme, I'd rate it as a number seven here, but due to all the upgrades here at, and for the nice time period of 1940. Thank you. Next up on the parametric condition assessment of the History House, we are going to talk about the exteriors. The History House was built in 1898 and according to the exterior, 
This includes all exteriors to a facility including finishes, siding, and the entire structure of the wall, including framing, insulation, cladding, studs, block wall. This does not include the windows, roofs, and doors. After discussion, we decided that we should come out with a grade of a six, above average. And looking at the exterior facade of the building, we see minor and some infrequent larger repairs that will require system function as intended. A lot of what we're looking at is the, the brick in the mortar joint. If you notice, the brick is cracked. Like we said, the build, building was built in 1898. There has been repairs. This is a cosmetic facade. Underneath, we know that there's another brick layer of rough material, but this is, this is more cosmetic, but the, we know there are, there are issues with it. How are the mortar joints and things that would lead to contributing to the structural integrity and keeping water out, those sorts of things? Well, from the park experience, we know from our experience that these mortar joints look sound, but we notice it's a very thin layer of material of the original mortar joints. And at times it does fail and there are repairs that are needed to be done to it. So then we came up with the overall rating of a six because six of some of these weaknesses. Average. Yes. But it's still in pretty good condition. Absolutely. Okay, Jeremy, tell us how we're gonna rate the grounds. So we're gonna rate the grounds as a zero because it falls under the landscape and not the structure of the building. And, uh, and that's gonna go for the driveways, the curbage, the slate sidewalks, and the road coming up to the building. The HVAC system is relatively new, and looking at the guide and through our discussion, it really would fall out to an eight. So we're gonna go with good. Few minor repairs are needed. Normal routine maintenance is required. Six system functions as intended. Right now, we're going over the parametrics for the interior. And by definition, we think that it is functioning as intended with few or minor repairs and general maintenance is needed to maintain it so that there's no impact. We know it's not in perfect condition, but this is a historic building and we think that it should show some signs that it's been lived in to reflect its age. I think that it's important to relay that to people who are going to be in it to visit and experience part of its history. So it does have some cracks. You're seeing some wear, some peeling of paint, but overall it's been restored and it, it's, it's functioning as it's intended as an interpretive building for people to be in. And we wouldn't really want to change that. We wouldn't want to restore its condition to new. So we, uh, we think that the overall rating is an eight, which is good. Great. All right, when we talk about the plumbing, uh, things that you got to consider in your plumbing, uh, of course, in it is the fire protection of the plumbing. Uh, also, your gas-related pipes, i.e., uh, your actually some of your stoves and stuff over here. Like in this building, we do have a propane uh, heated stove or gas stove, which obviously does work. Um, also, too, you got to look at your fixtures, seeing about the leak portions, if it actually works, and portions of the drains on here. Based on just what you've seen right here and knowing a little bit of knowledge of this building, the drainage system does work properly. All bathrooms in here work appropriately. Gas is in here. So we would rate this for the parametric scale of an eight. It's in good condition, but it does need minor uh, upkeep, checking, make sure nothing does freeze because it does get cold in this region a little bit. So we do check on these periodically. So an eight for this one. Is the roof of the history house and the rating on that yes we're gonna go with a seven on this roof this roof is about seven years old the black spots that you see are repairs it's a special uh water wind resistant roof that the exterior asphalt tabs adhere at the tips of it so it holds it holds the shingles down it's in great condition and we're going with the seven seven reads as significantly above average minor repairs are needed system functions as intended the black spots as i said are repairs that were done to the roof where shingles blew off from the wind and then we have some repairs around the the vents and the, the flashing around the vents and some painting needed on the fascia so minor um, cosmetic and as as a reminder because you're not standing here 
we have Sandy Hook Bay right across the street, and we have the Atlantic Ocean that is less than a half mile away to our east. So we're in a, we're in a sea condition, sea salt condition, which is a factor to building roofs. Yes, I'm going to read the textbook definition of structures. Consists of all foundation elements, slabs, footings, basement walls, etc. Decking, floor, construction beams, joists, and all interior load bearing walls, not interior portions of the walls. And the reason that we're taking the video down here, this is a real prime example of what the structure looks like. This, as we said, it's from 1890. This is the original, this is the original exterior wall. And these are the interior walls, which under the mortar joints, which we talked about, this is what is below the mortar joints. There's a secondary red brick wall under the cosmetic. Even though we're talking about structures, this is the structural wall that's below the exterior fabric. And then we've also got really good examples of rafters and floor joists as we're evaluating this. And not only that, we have one of the main low bearing walls that is coming through the building and actually the columns that are actually supporting each of them. And again, looking all the way down to the bottom to for your Boeing, your seepage, your your decaying of your, your, of your footers here. So how are we going to rate the structure for this building since we've walked around the basement and we've walked around the exterior looking at the foundation? Well, that's up for debate, but I believe that we are at a seven, Man. although the building is from the 1890s. What would classify it as a seven for the current condition? That so we're functioning really well. Minor repairs are needed, system function as intended. We just evaluated the windows and doors on the exterior, and we came up with a number, after some lengthy discussion, we came up with a number of five average. Minor and larger repairs are required. System is sporadically unable to function as intended. There are some windows that are really in poor condition, other windows that are in pretty good condition. And it averaged out to about a five. Our front door is in great condition. Our rear door is marginal. So that's really what it comes down to. It's accumulation of all the windows and all the doors. So just a few things that I want to point out after you've seen the video. Um, for the um, building, you saw them talk about ground and that it was a zero. Uh, you may be confused as to why we're talking about grounds when we're looking at a building. So while we do have a, system, uh, a parametric model built specifically for maintained landscapes, there are some instances where a park does not have a location for their maintained landscape, and they may have a small portion of ground associated to a building. So, the, so for those instances, we've included a ground system with the building to account for that, um, any of those buildings that may have ground associated with that. So for most of your buildings, you will probably be rating ground as a zero. The other thing I want to point out is when we're looking at the plumbing, um, we tested the stove. I just want to let you know that the stove would not be considered part of the scoring process. He was just testing to show that, that the gas was working. So the final step of the parametric scoring process is the data submission. Parks should work, again, with their regional uh, FMSS COCs and talk to them about the protocol for their um, specific region. Uh, in the links provided on the left, you guys will have viewing rights for the files that are located here. Um, you want to pay attention to the parametric guidance folder where all those resources are located. But the um, work order cleanup tool and the uh, parametric scoring tools will all be located at this SharePoint as well. However, only the regions will have the ability to uh, upload final spreadsheets to this SharePoint. Parks will have new rights only. Again, as I mentioned, you have the um, SharePoint and the notes pod on the left. <clears throat> uh, I want to share too that um, you will need a government computer or at least um, a PIV reader in order to access the SharePoint. You do not need to be on VPN in order to access it. If you have any questions throughout your scoring process, um, you can direct questions to the FMP help desk and those will get distributed to the 
appropriate parties to answer. So today we talked about parametric scoring, what it is and how the parametric model works. We talked about the nine point rating scale, and we talked about the steps required to complete the parametric scoring process. Thank you for joining us.